the Bucks have done it. They are back in the playoffs. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 21 of the Bucks UK podcast uh, with a big thanks, as always, to Bucks Report. I am joined by David, Adam and Pete. Hello, all. Hi, Dan. Hello, guys. Bye. Thank you for all the likes you gave us on the video last week, uh, 26, which is a good number for us. Um, these likes really do help us. So please don't forget to smash that thumbs up button. We're going to go for at least 25 again. So please make sure you hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe as well. Remember, we are on social media too. We're on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And those links are in the description below. Also, you can join us at www.butchuk.org. Visit our website there, click on the Join tab, and all the information you need regarding membership is on that page. And finally, if you want to send us a WhatsApp, send us a video message, who knows, it might appear on a podcast episode soon. Our number is 07311-212-713. So, there's only one place we can start. Uh, today, gents, and that has to be the fact that the Bucks have done it. We are they are back in the playoffs. How do we feel? Absolutely delighted, <laughs> relieved, exhausted following Sunday night. I mean, we finished the game UK time at what just after nine mm -hmm. Saturday night. Sorry, yep. I was still up at half two in the morning. There was no way I was going to sleep. <laughs> I was watching the American football to the end. Uh, what a relief, you know, we, the Bucks went all in to get there this year and thank God they've made it. Um, you know, absolutely delighted, absolutely. both for the fans, for all the players, all those long-serving players like Levante, Mike mm. Evans, all those guys that have been there and put the effort in over the years. Everybody in the Bucks organisation mm. as well, I mean, Brian Ford and the guys in the organisation front office, Brilliant. they all yeah. work so hard every year absolutely, and it's fantastic. Yeah. That we've been able to get there. Mm. Did, did I see Adam? You got uh, a celebratory drink <laughs> with you. Did, did I see that sneak well, in there? Yeah. What? Yes, Pete. Help go us on. win the winning prosecco. Everyone was getting <laughs> well, on the drinks. There's a few congratulations tonight, really. Now we got um we got John Gregan, or as we know him better as. On the forum, he actually got married. Yes, he did. Oh, really? Yes, yeah. He, he, tweet, he, he, he tweeted him. that as well, and when we did, we tweeted that. So, John, a huge congratulations from us all. Absolutely, uh, yeah, but definitely. boy, did it feel good to be back in the playoffs. I was oh, jumping through the roof when we went victory formation, and then trying to—I don't know about you lot—but trying to sleep after that, impossible. Just oh, so definitely. good. I haven't been able to sleep for a few days. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't feel right. It just, yeah, it doesn't feel real. Yeah. Super relaxed during the game, but then after it, I didn't. I don't know what to do with myself. It's just, mm. it's just strange uh, feeling. It, and it just stinks even more about COVID, doesn't it? I mean, of course, so uh, ev everyone who has lost ones, of course, our thoughts are, mm. are, are with you. It's a horrible time. But, mm. but from a football perspective, us UK fans wanting to get out there and see Brady, see the Bucks in the playoffs, we just can't do it. And how frustrating that it happens now. Oh, it's yeah. absolutely crazy. I mean, I go out, as much as you know, three or four times a year. Mm. And to not be out this year of all years is, oh, it's just <laughs> yeah. terrifying. I mean, after the game, first thing I did was went on and looked to what airfares were. And the price is a crazy minute, but you can't go. We're just not allowed to leave the country. <laughs> no, oh, I know. Absolutely Teasing you. gutting. Absolutely gutting. <laughs> It's uh, what was it three hundred and four pound return or something, David? Yeah, you, right. you uh, Prices are crazy. Oh, direct flight. Yeah. <laughs> direct flight. So. Direct flight. Yeah. Just uh, rub it in a bit more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we've said about how happy we are here at Butch UK about the Buccaneers making the playoffs. So let's discuss exactly how the Bucks got there and take a look back at the game against Detroit. The Buccaneers left Detroit with a 47-7 win. An absolutely amazing performance on both sides of the ball. Now, Adam, I've got to say, that's a statement of intent from the Buccaneers, isn't it, at this point? Unbelievable. Absolutely brilliant. And I know we always talk about destroying a team. And I suppose the Lions are an easy target because they were depleted. Stafford got injured early. But it's still nice to see us put a foot on the gas and keep it on the gas. And... We talk about slow starts. Jesus, the one of the best halves we've ever had. It's a record-breaking half. Unbelievable. 
it, 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 not just one of the best halves, it's got to be one of the best games we've ever had, oh, I would have thought. Uh, uh, I mean, absolutely sensational. And Pete, uh, Adam mentioned about the Lions uh, coaching staff. It was completely makeshift. Of course, that would have had an impact on the game. How much of an impact do you feel it had? Massive. I think it would have been massive for them because they, they, it was interim coach on behind interim coach. <laughs> <So it's laughs> got to be history breaking of, it, of just, just, just have, having it that way. But it was unreal the game, really. I mean, it's. I was looking up some stats. It's the tied the record for road games. It this the second most winning margin in franchise history. It was the highest we've ever scored in one half, like going into the half since 2014 or something like that. Yeah. It's just it's just crazy. The it was of records, like nine we've... records, wasn't it? Something like mm. nine records. Yeah, broken, that broken in one, in one game. game. Uh, am I the only one who had flashbacks to the Giants game last season, though, when we were that far in front? No. You must have been. No. Okay, have... okay. No, all right, no, just me. That's fine because I, I I still haven't quite got over that. I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> there was a, there was a moment when they brought in the the uh, backup quarterback that you did think, oh, yeah. we're we going to have this again, but. After mm. the first snap, we was like, no, actually, he's, just, he's cutting into the ground just like the first one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I said on the forum as well, um, I wonder if this is what the Falcons UK forum was like last week when he was so <laughs> yeah. far ahead of us. I, 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 luckily, do, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't I think do, they can ever get comfortable, can they? The amount no, of blow, no. they've blown this year, can yeah, they ever get comfortable? Uh, we'll, we'll get on to that later. We will. We'll come yeah. on to that later. Absolutely, David. So, um, <laughs> I mean, I think one big thing was, you know, it was done. Those points were scored on pure offence. Yes, None of them yeah. were really on the back of turnovers mm. or, you know, the defence scoring points. It so, was genuine offensive scoring, which was fantastic. So, David, so in a way leading on to that, very loosely leading on from that, um, there were only three players who saw all snaps on the side on their side of the ball, and that was Wirfs, Kappa and Jensen. And, of course, we brought in some of the backups uh, they strong in the game I don't know about you but I thought it was great to see backups on uh, all sides of the ball making an impact yeah absolutely I mean you know this is a it's a team game and any one time you could lose players we've known it from injury from COVID um, to give those guys a bit of experience and game time I think was a pretty smart move as well as protecting the starters as well, you know, we had, mm. and they didn't just play, they came out with some big plays as well, you know, led better with that interception, absolutely fantastic. So, yeah, to see them come in, you know, you could say they were equally playing against the second string Detroit team, but they came in, they did a job, and Blaine Gabbert, look at him, I mean, he's done it in the past on and off, he's never really found a home, but he came in and immediately burned the ball up the middle to Gronk, which... That's exactly what you want in your backup, yeah. isn't it? Exactly yeah. what you want. Mm. To feel comfortable like that, that you can yeah. come in and yeah. you're going to hit that in. pass straight to Gronk and it's straight for a touchdown. You, you couldn't ask for any better, could you, if you were no. playing? No, it was, it, it, was, it, was a, it was so good to see that. And, I mean, uh, Pete, we, 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 going on to your fencing more detail now, there's only one place to start and that's Tom Brady. He looked as good as ever on Sunday. He only played one half, but he had 27 passing attempts, 22 completions, 348 yards and four touchdowns. Just phenomenal. Perfect passer rating, <laughs> which is the first time in 10 years and the second time in Bucks history that any QB has had a perfect passer rating. So that's, he, it's the Brady effect in full effect. Jerry, this is full force of the Brady effect this year. We, everyone doubted it in the beginning and we've had some hiccups along the way, but that Lions game, okay, they, they were a very uh, poor Lions, but he just showed what in one half he showed everything that he is capable of doing and it, all those passes to Evans I mean mm. it was only it was only a few games ago that nobody thought that Evans was ever going to make anywhere close to the thousand right. yards you know having two touchdowns for two yards in one game you think oh it's, it's just getting beyond him it's not going to be mm. possible and then all of a sudden 40 yards it, it, I know, it was like three close. games ago for me. Three games ago, I was mm. thinking, oh, he's going to be real tough to get the record. Yeah. And I was almost yeah. at ease that he wasn't going to get it. And then all of a sudden, now, <laughs> 40 yards to go, and he's going to get it. I mean, yeah. one, thing, one thing Evans has done this year is he's broken the franchise record for touchdowns as well, receiving touchdowns, his own record. His own record. I believe yeah. it's, I think, is it 13 he's got now? So, yeah. I mean, he's been used differently this year, though, hasn't he? He's been used more in the red zone as opposed to moving us down the field. But what was it, 180 odd yards he got? on Saturday, which, and two touchdowns, absolutely amazing performance. And David, in terms of 
the the yardage that our offense did have altogether by the end of the game we had 588 yards <laughs> there was 30 first downs zero turnovers it doesn't get much better than that really no it was actually brilliant wasn't it and even say so, we mentioned it earlier when brady came off for, for the second half Gabbert just kept it going, didn't he? I mean, you know, mm. Mike Evans got a lot of yardage <laughs> off playing Gabbert as well. Mm. It yeah. wasn't all just braiding no. uh, Evans. Mm. So that was just great to see. And we just pummeled him, didn't we? We, it, we did. And, and like I say, it wasn't just Evans, of course. Goblin, amazing. Gronk, great plays. And another player that I want to mention, Adam, who we saw a lot more of on Saturday, which I was really happy to see, was Kajon Vaughan. Yeah, big he, time. He, he really came in and did well. The running game as a whole, I know I keep banging on about her on the podcast all the time, but 26 rushing attempts and all that passing and we batter a team. It's just, it goes hand in hand. Whenever we rush, whenever we give the boys the chance, it opens up the passing game. And it was such a good thing to see. All those rushing attempts, Keyshawn Vaughan coming in with, you know, we've hardly seen him really. We've mm. seen him on a few third downs, but he was brilliant, wasn't he? Uh, absolutely, it was. Uh, I, I think he uh, he sort of put Fournette out the game eventually, really, didn't he? I think Fournette only had twenty odd yards, not even that. So the the mm. game uh, Arians seemed to trust Keyshawn Vaughan in this instance on the run game. Um, David, I've got to ask you about the run game. Were you happy about it this week? Absolutely, you know, bro. I all scream about it every week, and yeah, it was good to mix it up. And I said, Keyshawn. When he came on, he made two really early plays, both for first downs, straight away, running straight Brilliant. through the middle. Blocking was a lot better this week, I thought, as well. The, yeah, the line looked a lot more organised and created more things than we've seen in a lot. How much of that was the quality of our offence? How much was the quality of their defence? But, um, mm. yeah, the whole game mm. looked more like we had a plan. Yeah, you can only play what's in front of you. So, yeah. I know we can, we can down-talk the Lions as much as we want. But the O line, I got on my notes, massive clap for the O line. Mm, Donovan's going to give away a few customary penalties, which mm -hmm. we're all used to now. But on the whole, <laughs> brilliant performance blocking, yeah. brilliant performance opening gaps up the run game. It, it, oh, there it, were some it, clean pockets. When, oh, when oh, you yeah. watch back the highlights, the, the clean pockets. Brady's got all the time in the world to see that pass to Godwin, that dart mm. to, to AB in the back of the, back of the end zone. Mm -hmm. He just had all, all day to, to choose where he was going. And with Keyshawn Vaughan, what I liked is that he's going to continue in the play. There was that play where he went one way and it sort of yeah. closed off and then he followed back round and carried mm. on. He was going to continue in the play. He's definitely showing that next year he could be the potential for Big the time. number two spot. Uh, I think I think Rojo and Keyshawn Vaughan are the future <laughs> of our running game. Ooh. You know, And I think we've got a very exciting future in terms of the running back position if it is Rojo and Keyshawn Vaughan going forward. Certainly what I've seen this season, I hope that's the case. Adam, I want to go back to what you were saying about the O-line quickly. Um, and I, I, I agree with you. Thumbs up, round of applause for them. I thought they did really well. I think it goes back as well to um, the stat I gave earlier, which was uh, just checking my notes again to make sure I get this right right, um, which was how the three players that saw all the offensive snaps were Worths, Kappa and Jensen. First of all, it shows how integral they've become to this O-line and actually the, the fact that maybe they're taking, maybe they're taking the lead on this O-line. Maybe that the other players are stepping up to match their level possibly. Well, every game and every training session is time that they're getting together to gel. So this is exactly what you want to happen just before a playoff run. I never thought I'd be saying that last year. <laughs> but we, the O line is becoming a massive part of us getting in the playoffs, and it's just mm. brilliant. I, I, you can't say enough about cut out those penalties, right? And our O line is top 15, maybe top 10, dare I say it, if we use it correctly. Mm. So I am going to, I am going to worry about the O line. No, I have to say, and I think Donovan Smith has really stepped up recently. And as someone who has absolutely slaughtered him all season, I will hold my hands up and say, fair play, Donovan. I don't know what, you know, maybe it's having Brady behind him, having that quarterback who's making him take account for the mistakes he makes. Perhaps that's what he needed, unlike Jameis, where he was always, oh, it's all right, guys, next play, next play. Maybe having uh, Brady is what's taken Donovan Smith to that next level. So let's have a talk about this defence as well, because while the offence were amazing, you know, it, let's take nothing away from our defence, only seven points conceded in the game, and that wasn't until the third quarter. David, give us your thoughts. 
Well, it wasn't even a defence that conceded no, it's on seven points. Teams, so so special teams conceded. Oh, of course, sorry, special teams. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Had a shutout. Yes. So yeah. that was fantastic to see. Um, they looked strong, solid. Um, they got pressure when they needed to. Uh, so yeah, and I'm not sure they really overexerted themselves at times. They no. just held no. them tough and. Detroit, Detroit, not have a single play in our half till second half. I think. Yeah, it was something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, D- Detroit lost Matthew Stafford as well very early yeah. on, um, which um, you know he's he's not you know nothing against Matthew Stafford. He's a pretty good quarterback. So, uh, I mean, I think that was certainly a help to us to, to the Buccaneers anyway. Not not having to face Stafford for the whole game. Um, Adam, someone that we do need to talk about in particular. While as I said, the whole defense did have a great performance. Devin White was absolutely back on it. Uh, ten total <laughs> tackles, a sack, two tackles for losses. Yes. Yeah, uh, Dave has got his jersey, and Pete's got his yeah. Devin White jersey as well. It, 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 I, I can't remember who it was said last week, but Pro Bowl, though, right? Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. You'd Should think be. so. <laughs> <laughs> but he was absolutely phenomenal, wasn't he, Devin White? Yeah. The yeah. first line of my notes on defense is Devin White is a beast, and he is becoming that guy. He's unreal. When he's on, he's almost unplayable. He's everywhere, around the ball, making tackles, getting to the quarterback. He is something else. And and we we've spoken about it week in week out. That partnership with Levante David, experience with youth, that seems to be working just bang on for us. I, I, and to, and uh, they are they both captains? Levante Davis captain as well, isn't he? Yeah, I've seen both of the captains. Yeah. Back. So 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 we got two our uh, two middle linebackers who are not only great players, but clearly showing their great leaders as well and really helping this defence. Now, um, Pete, we said about the backup players on the offence stepping up and making plays. We also had the backup players on the defence coming in. Uh, Ledbetter uh, came in and got a sack. Ryan Cockrell with some big plays again. And Herb Miller, who was only <laughs> promoted from uh, the practice squad, yeah. was it two or three days before the yeah. game, gets his first career interception. <laughs> yeah. And for the Anthony Nelson got uh, his first sack as well. It was, uh, what I love seeing with the defence is when they're so up for the game and they yeah. were so up mm. for this, they were all chomping at the bit to just get in there and get sacks and make plays. And that's you can't ask for any more than that. When everyone, JPP was bouncing off the walls just to just to get going. They, I just love it. Absolutely love defence. I love watching them when they're just yeah. when they're like that. You, you can't can feel the intensity, can you? You can yeah. feel it, enjoying it. You can you mm. just like you can watch it and feel the intensity as they play it. At it, times you couldn't even work out who had actually got the sack because there'd be so many no. people on yeah. top of the court. <laughs> <you'd be> like, <laughs> which one actually is it? it th- so this weird. is clearly a defense who's enjoying playing under Todd Bowles, oh. and everyone knows how good a defensive coordinator Todd Bowles is, and he. He's creating this atmosphere, this uh, uh, just this wonderful place for defense to play, and it, it's clearly working. Our defense are looking great, um, and uh, the, the pass as well. We, we we didn't give up many yards on the. I think it was just over a hundred yards. I know Stafford wasn't in again, um, but it's great. But even so, it's still good to see that the defense has stepped up in terms of um, stopping the pass game. Yeah, I mean, we had a few players out. Obviously, Colton wasn't there, and Mike Edwards, who's another of the unsung heroes. We lost him at about half-time. Um, but yeah, but they shut him down pretty well, really, didn't they? A mm. couple of plays or yards, but other than that, practically nothing. But if you give the quarterback no time, then it's going to make it easy for him, isn't it? it we were certainly focusing on getting to the quarter, quarterback more than anything, weren't we? Just not wanting yeah. to give him a chance to, uh, to get those balls deep into our secondary. And as we said, Devin White, Levante David, JPP, uh, Sue all key players in that area of the ball. And uh, I thought... I think uh, Goulst, Will Goulston's had, a, has yes. had some yeah. great games lately. He's been on fire. I think McGlendon has is, is been a great replacement for, mm. for Vita. He's come in and really done some top work, really. Been and, pretty strong. And Will Goulston, again, another player who's a, a long-term member of the Buccaneers as well. Another yeah, player who, I'm, you know, along with uh, Lamonte David, Mike Evans thrilled that he's going to get a shot at the playoffs as well. We've got so many players in this team who deserve that shot off the playoffs. They stayed with us and now they're reaping the rewards. It's just great mm-hmm. to see. So let's move on and have a chat about the special teams as well. Um, uh, off day for Ryan Suckup? Yes? No? I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. 
I hope it doesn't lead into one of those things where it gets in his head and, you know, he's had a bad game and suddenly that that's it. He thinks that, you know, he's on that on that downward slope. But I hope mm. it's just a hiccup and it's the best game to have a hiccup in because we didn't need him. It, it, it's The timing is not great though, is it? I mean, let's hope it is a hiccup because if it's not and it's the start of bad form, this is the worst time possible for that to start. Yeah, well, I mean, it was... got... yeah go on, Dave. It was really worrying when we were watching the commentary and the um, commentator said, and it was around this time last season that Matt Gay fell to pieces. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, oh, no. <laughs> Talk about the curse of the commentator. Seriously. It's... <laughs> Goodness I'm just me. Glad he's got a... I'm glad he's got this Falcons game to sort of recorrect uh, the, yeah. the accuracy before we get into the playoffs. <laughs> and, and the home game. missing 10 and the home game. The playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, Sorry, David, go on, sorry. I was going to say, firstly, it was a strange day for kickers anyway, mm. apart from mm. the misses from Sucker, the Patriots signed Robert Aguero. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And how anyone, many though. kicks were missed <laughs> on last Saturday and Sunday in the league? Oh, it seemed to be ridiculous. every game you turned on, yeah. kicks were going all over the place. Uh, and so, you, you yeah, know, not, only, think... not, not only did the Patriots sign Robert Aguero, uh, David, Nick Folk still played for them last night. I, that's a weird move, that is. Mm. Well, Aguero was only put on a practice squad, wasn't he? Oh, was he? Right, OK. That yeah. explains that one. That explains that one. Um, one other player I do just want to mention again on special teams uh, is Ken John Barner, because he was backing uh, playing at, or as a punt return. Now, I love the fact he tries to make plays, but over the previous week, he clearly still hasn't looked up the definition of a fair mm. catch. Surely there's some times where you need to use football intelligence there. I mean, yeah. I nicknamed him on the night Kenyan Dangerous, but he, <laughs> no, he, he doesn't know the meaning of a fair catch. No. He picks it no, and wants to not... go every time. And you just know that sooner or later, that's going to come back and bite us if we're not careful. Yeah. Like, one of my points here, I've just got it down. My bar is so low with the special teams. I'm just happy if he catches it. I don't even <laughs> care anymore. I just want safety first. My bar is super low, so I'm just happy with... Catching the ball, if he gets three or four yards, which he has been getting, I'm happy. Mm. But please, yeah, yeah, someone teach him a fair catch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can't necessarily win games so much on special teams, but you can no. definitely lose. <sighs> and you yes. can definitely lose momentum. Yes, yeah, so we're not a flair team on special teams, are we? Let's no, be honest. Yeah. Hey, going yeah. into the last game of the season, I think safety first is our motto. And you can give up a 70-yard touchdown oh. on special teams as well. But, <laughs> but, but, I was I mean, a little I, bit surprised as we actually changed personnel for the second mm. half that actually we didn't try anyone else on the punt mm. kickoff returns, maybe. Yeah. I mean, AB was one person potentially, but then I suppose they do you want to risk the potential of running yeah. your starters yeah. getting injured? But the fact that we didn't give anybody else a go means it is job now, so we've got yeah. to rely on him. He, uh, just going back to uh, AB, actually, David, because I don't think we mentioned him. So he's just going completely back to the offense momentarily. He had a really good game as well. For me, he was he was he, he, obviously he's still going to take him a bit of time, but he was looking close to the AB that was at Pittsburgh. I thought he was making great plays. Was it one or two touchdowns he got? But it, one. was it the one? one. Uh, but that, that touchdown pass was lovely. He didn't have to break Amazing. stride. It, it was. It, I mean, Brady's throws phenomenal. <laughs> but uh, it. it what a performance from this team overall and it, hopefully it's really good momentum going on to mm. the Falcons next and then into the playoffs. So guys, just to round off this segment of the show, let's talk about the magic wand. If there is anything you can say for the magic wand after that almost uh, perfect performance, uh, David, uh, uh, what, uh, if anything, would you use your magic wand on for the game against the Falcons? Make sure nobody picks up any outs through COVID this week. Let's keep them safe. Let's keep them healthy and make sure we've got the full first team to pick from. Uh, it, that's actually a very good one. If I used my brain a bit more, I might have thought about that myself. Um, Adam, what about you? Well, I'm going to say it again. I've said it so many times now. Keep using the running game. I, it's not even a magic one that I've said that again, but just keep ploughing the runs in, in. Give it a good mix. Opens up the opens up the, the passing game, and we've got the best wide receivers in the league, and the best quarterback. A balanced offense, absolutely essential yeah. to being successful in this league. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's a very good call there as well, Adam. And Pete, what about you? Uh, 
what I loved, I've just remembered that we had this the fast start. We didn't defer the ball this time, which um, Bruce has come out saying was something yes. different. So that was yeah. that was a, a key to this fast start. So hopefully we can, could, you know, be in that position again to maybe keep that going. That might be a good change of form now going into the playoffs if we're always forcing our offense to to go for it at first. Maybe that's what was the difference is. But my magic wand will just be that 40 yards for Evans. That's all I really want now. Yes. And, and yeah. it'd be nice for Rojo to get his yards if he's back. thousand yards, yeah. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah, it, 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 that's Pete. That's what I've got written here. I, I'm with you on that one. I just want to see Evans make his thousand yards. I, I, yeah, I'll be honest. Yeah, I want us to win as well, of course, too. But I want Evans to continue his thousand yards season record. So yeah, that's what I hope on that one. Such a record. Just to be able to have your name on at, at the top there, just be amazing for him. Absolutely amazing well. for a Bucks. Doing how many records are broken in that yeah. one game? <laughs> franchise yeah. records, yeah. history records for the for the franchise, and then to now have you know Evans that close to, to doing it would be awesome. Absolutely. So, that and Brady really? against Breeze. I always want that to keep going on. I want Brady to. Yes. I hope Breeze retires next year. Yeah. So <laughs> has that extra year of, of, of yards. But, uh, well, I'm getting ahead of myself here, but I want to beat. Uh, sorry, to face the Saints in the playoffs, so we can we can have the last laugh. They beat us twice in the regular season. I want us to have the last laugh in the playoffs. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So that's a view of our panel. It's now time to see what some of our members thought about the game against Detroit. So we'll start off with Alistair. 99% sure I'm going to be an emotional wreck as we kick off our playoff game. <laughs> Such an unreal feeling. Let's hope Mike can nail the record next week. The Bucks get a win and smash the NFC East in the first round. I think we're going all the way. You see, actually, that's. Yes. Uh, it, uh, I'm pleased he mentioned that, actually, because one thing we haven't uh, said about is the the uh, fifth seed isn't tied up yet we've got to be if we lose to atlanta and the rams win then the rams get the fifth seed so we've still got something to play for there so that's a so absolutely i hope we do have an nfc east team but we can't afford to rest yet jd playoffs thing hard to remember what that feels like I posted earlier about sporting metaphors. Well, the Bucks declared at half time. That's for all you cricket fans out there. I love it. Uh, yeah, I thought, I thought that was a pretty good one. So, any cricket fans, that one's for you there, everybody. Uh, Steve, something to play for next week. Want to be the fifth seed so we play the winners of the NFC East. Yes, please. Absolutely. Time to look ahead now to the Bucks' final regular season game against the Falcons in Tampa. Week 17 sees Atlanta travel to Tampa for the final game of the regular season. And I tell you, I tell you what, guys, we, you know, it's an interesting question here. We've got to win this game to ensure we get the fifth seed. So do we rest our starters? Do we play our starters? I think we should play them. I don't know what you guys think. Bruce has come out saying he's going all out. He's, he's going for the win. So I think there will be... We'll see how we get on in the first half again, I suppose. See where we are and see... Who, who we decide to bring on if we're going to rest anyone later on in the game. But do well, I see, he, like I say, Bruce has come out saying he's he's all out for the win. So, yeah, yeah. start all the way. In our, in our prediction show right at the start of the season, I said, if we've got to the playoffs already and it's this Falcons game that I didn't care about the result or anything. Uh, yeah, but I that. couldn't be further <laughs> from the truth. Though. I really care. We need to beat these Falcons to get our fifth seed. Because there's a few, there's a few teams we could face as well, isn't there? I know uh, it, we could face New Orleans if, if we were six seeds. We could face New Orleans, I believe, Seattle. And I know there's a few other teams in there. Green Bay, uh, Green Bay was that another one? David, saw you were yeah. going to make a point. Well, I think it's all very easy for us to sit back and say if we play our starters, we're going to beat Atlanta. But it's not that easy, you know. <laughs> they have shown that they are a half decent team, and they've let in an awful lot of games. We know yeah. that. They can't seem to hold on to a lead, but there's always going to be that one game where they do. Yeah. And I mm. don't want this to be uh, the banana skin, um, especially mm. for the Bucks fans, you know? Mm. We, we can't we've got them all at Raymond James, and we've, mm. we've got to do it on our home turf. Hopefully you know, we I learn from go the out and, get a win, and I really want to see us get the win, really play with the full first team. And going into the playoffs, as we've said before, it's all about momentum. It doesn't actually matter if we're 11 and 5. 
you know, the five wins a few games ago now, we've run three in a row, we've got mm. to make it four in a row, we've mm. got to be going in with huge momentum into the playoffs. It, and then once you do that, then anybody can win. It, so uh, I yeah, want us to go full pedal down and actually keep doing the job. Uh, and I think Arians mm. will do that now. I think it, it, the fact that there's still something to play for in this final game means that we're just going to plough on through. So I think that's actually good that we've got something that we need to fight to in that game. It's funny you, you use the phrase uh, banana skin, uh, David, because it, I think if my memory serves me correctly, generally generally these week 17 games, you don't necessarily see high scoring games in these weeks. It's a very anxious affair because it normally this or generally this is what it all comes down to. A big question, I think, in terms of the Bucks, because none of our, well, apart from Brady and Gronk, I believe, none of the players have got playoff experience. So, JPP. It's got, it, uh, oh, of course, JPP. Sorry, thank you. As I was saying, as I, as I was asking you guys, I'm thinking there's someone else that I'm missing, <laughs> I think. Um, so, but there's a team collectively. Hmm. You know, we haven't got the experience of yes. those it, So, so uh, how, how are they going to cope with that pressure? That's what I want to see anyway. Well, that is something can... I'm worried about, definitely, as well. Mm. We've, we've shown prime time that we, um, you know, we've struggled prime time. And all of a sudden, we go into the playoffs, and that's then basically prime time games. Mm. And, and we've really done, you know, we haven't done very well. So it, it's something that I am quite nervous about, if I'm mm. honest. This is the perfect time, though, for those players who've never been into the playoffs to lean heavily on the likes of Gronk and Brady and JPP. Just listen, absorb everything you can from those guys and just... I, if they can't get excited for these types of games, then they can't ever get excited in their lives. This is their time to sign, especially guys like Levante, David and that. Oh, yeah. Whole career without the playoffs. Mm. I'm telling you, he is going to be lights out in this next Absolutely. game. Absolutely. Yeah. Same with Evans. I yeah, yeah definitely. I, I, I think most, not, sorry, no, not most. I think all the team are going to be so yeah. pumped and hyped up for this. A good thing, though, of course, is that we have got a coach who has exper- a head coach who has experienced the playoffs. Um, you said about JPP, Gronk and Brady. I think their leadership is going to be vital in this mm-hmm. next part of the offseason, taking, uh, sorry, uh, in the, the, the postseason, taking, if you like, the rest of the team under their wing and mentoring them almost through this postseason to make sure we get as far as we can. Well, again, I just think that, you know, when we're looking at Atlanta, you know, whilst we're looking forward and going playoffs, there's going to be a lot of players on that Atlanta roster that are going to be fighting for their careers. Mm. Yeah. I, you know, and the coaches yeah. as well. You know, yeah. Raheem and Cutter, they're going to be fighting for to stay with the franchise. So, you know, they, I expect them to come out and give us a good game. I mean, oh, Matt, definitely, they're going to want to try and knock us off the perch if they can, aren't they? If they can, if they can ruin our party, then they are going to want to ruin our party. They're, they're going to want. We can learn. Is, exactly, Pete. They're going to want revenge, aren't they, <laughs> for that that last game because of how it unfolded? Them having that massive lead, us coming back and playing phenomenally in that second half. They're going to want revenge on that one. And Matt Ryan always plays so well against us. I don't know what it is about. Uh, it's like Adam when you were saying about Julio Jones, who uh, you know you never want to see a player out through injury. But his the fact he hasn't been injured means we haven't had to worry about him. But those two were always having ridiculously good performances against us. So well, that's, we've got to uh, watch Calvin, haven't we? He's the, oh, he's really, the, yeah, he's the next one up. Yeah, <clears throat> he, he he had a massive game against us uh, yeah. last time out. Well, look it was how, over he had 100 a good yards. game against the Chiefs, didn't he? He did, against yeah. The Chiefs, he's doing over 100 yeah. yards. Do he? Yeah. The Chiefs, everyone goes on, they're the, they're the Super mm. Bowl champs. They've got to be, you know, they're the best in the league. And the the Falcons didn't roll over against them. No. no. no we Pete. just can't afford to give them that 17-point lead or any type of lead like we did in no. the first game. We can't rely on no. keep coming back in the second half. If we can pull the gas down like we did against the Lions... We'll kill them off because their confidence just isn't there. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm hoping we might yeah. defer again and go for that fast start. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or I mean, but, not, uh, not defer. Uh, and, mm. and that's and that's what we've been wanting to see, you know, all season, isn't it? A fast start from this offense, and we yeah. did it against um, against Detroit. I, I mean, yes, I, I know. Uh, Detroit had that had their coaching team. You know they weren't there under COVID. I, I understand all that, but it was still a blistering start, and our offense should be doing that. So let's just quickly go on, guys, to your keys to the game and player or players to watch. Uh, Pete, uh, what do uh, what's your key to the game and players to watch 
uh, against Atlanta. It's, it's still Calvin Ridley. It, 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 we can't we let him have such a, a huge game and he's <laughs> having such a huge season that we didn't really put. Okay, maybe you don't want to double team somebody, but you've got no choice. He, he's Ryan's number one with no Julio. He's he's where Ryan's going, so you've got yeah. to double team him and then try and push it onto Hurst and um, Gage and stuff and try and contain them the best you can. Try and force. If if Ryan hasn't got the time, if we put the pressure on him, and he hasn't got the time and he hasn't got the ability to get it to Ridley because he's covered, then we're pushing, we're forcing him to make mistakes. So I really, that's that's all I can see that we need to change from last time is coming out and really forcing forcing Ryan to have nowhere to throw. I can't disagree. Like, like, obviously, Calvin Ridley's their number one by a mile, and they haven't got a number two or a three like AB and Chris Godwin. They just haven't got those players. So if we can take him out of the game, force Ryan to... They're not going to run on us, that's for sure. No. Our, running game, our run defence no. is so stout that they're yeah. not going to run on us. So we need to force Ryan to get onto his second read, third read, and make it super difficult for him all night. I don't think they even had 50 yards on a rush when we played them a couple of weeks ago. No, uh, Gurley, we... was, Gurley was... Un- you didn't hear his name, no. did you, Gurley? No. And no. You think what a big player he is, and you don't mm. hear... You know, Gurley, his name being called out. You think, no. How, what, is he injured? No, he's there, but they're not using him because they know they're not going to get anywhere. But it, do, but it does show, as both you and Adam have said, Pete, why getting to Ryan is so important because all the points they did put up, um, or, or at least the big gains as well, were through the air against our secondary. So it does show... So I see exactly why you two are saying that the key to the game for you two is to get to Ryan and the player they need to watch is, is Calvin Ridley. Absolutely. David, what about you? What's your key to the game and the player to watch? Yeah, well, two bits. Just following on the theme that we've just had, mm. we've moved further and further away from zonal defence Yes. in the last uh, yeah. few games. And that's huge. Massive. I think we've learned our lessons. We cannot play zonal defence with no. the secondary we've got and the more we move away from that I think the better and then again we just shut down the guys that were the big players and then we're there the other thing is um, Chris Godwin who actually we didn't really mention from the game just gone but he had another great game made a sensational touchdown oh and, touchdown yeah. and that catch up the middle when it yeah, it, yeah, yeah. that diving forward you just how yeah. does he catch these balls and I think the fact that they're going to double team Evans because they know we want to get the ball to him yeah. yeah, that's going to be a shame. Um, so I think that's going to free up Godwin this week early on. Mm-hmm. And I think we might well see that actually they smother Evans like crazy early. Mm. They release Godwin. If we can use him, get away, um, then that'll open up the yards for Evans later yeah, on in time. the game. So I yeah. don't think we want to panic if Evans hasn't had a, a reception <coughs> in the first quarter or into the second. I think it will open up for him. Yeah. But I think we're yeah, going to yeah. have to use other weapons early on. He can literally get his record in one play. So yeah. Yeah. I, I don't care yeah. if he doesn't have any receptions through the fourth quarter, and then it's no. one play, one deep ball, sixty about, yards, and it's done. Yeah, that's it. it like, as, I, as you say, if he gets that one play, if it's one Fact, target, it, one yeah. catch, it would be pretty. Weird. One target, one catch, forty odd yards, and why not? Let's say he gets a touchdown right, as well. Even better. That that would really put the ice on the cake. Um, Run so, into the end zone with four defence uh, yeah. guys hanging off. <laughs> <on. laughs> <laughs> or dancing like the Rams game when he was skipping in. That, yeah, yeah. that one again. Uh, so, so is Evans your player to watch then, David, from that point? Or is uh, someone... no, I think early on it's Godwin. I early think early Godwin. on okay. it's Chris yep. Godwin to actually make the plays, get us established in the game, and yep. then Evans come on later. Brilliant. Great. Love that. So let's just finish off then, guys, with our score predictions. Uh, David, how do you see this one finishing? 35 21 bucks. Adam? 38-7. Confident. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Feet? Uh, 28-17, I reckon. Don't I? It, it, yeah, I, I, I've gone 28-24. I, I think it's going to be... Uh, Matt Ryan always uh, likes to play good against us, so I've got a feeling <laughs> he will do something against us on that one. We've just got to shut him down. If we can shut him down, then it'll be it'll be Adam's score. But if we don't, he finds that way. I mean, the other thing is Ryan can scramble. He's shown mm. recently that he he can scramble himself. So, you know, we put the blitz on, they get held up. The secondary's looking for Calvin Ridley, and Ryan's already set off to get the first down himself. So, that's the other thing that we always got to be careful. That's what's good about Matt Stafford going out the game is that mm. we didn't have to worry about him yeah. rushing himself. 
Yeah. Uh, and not, uh, either way, though, a nice win to finish off the, the regular season and give us some great momentum entering into the playoffs will be the icing on the cake. Mm-hmm. Now, we've got a treat coming up for our Butts UK members uh, ahead of the Atlanta Games. Uh, David, do you want to tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, sure. So at the end of the regular season, normally on the forum, we have a big, what we call the end of season disco, where we encourage everybody to come online, um, to have a bit of fun with us and a little bit of banter at the end of the season. Obviously, it's not our final game this year because we're going to the playoffs. Um, (laughs) But we wanted to do something special for our fans this year. So instead of having a live cast during the game, because we think that may not work if people are watching a game on different applications, so there might be some time difference issues and delays. And the last thing you want is everyone going up cheering for another Bucks <laughs> touchdown and it's still a minute behind on your feed. What we're going to do is we're going to have a get-together at the Brady and Gronk pub. <laughs> oh, yeah, online, we're all going to get together and we're going to have a good team meet and a chat and a few drinks and come along and just say some fun before the game against the Falcons. So we'll be Ooh. online just after five o'clock on Sunday. The login details will be on the forum, so please make sure you come along and join us. Uh, it'd be great to see everybody. Brilliant. So that is something that uh, all our members can get involved in. We hope to see as many of you as possible. Adam, I know there's something you wanted to say to uh, yeah. uh, our members as well. I just want to say it's been brilliant on the forum this year, guys. Thanks ever so much for getting on there. The, the games on Sundays have been brilliant this year. It feels like we're all watching the games together. We finally get into the playoffs and it feels like amongst all this COVID controversy that we're all there watching the games on a Sunday together. It's absolutely brilliant. So I just want to thank all of you for getting on there on a Sunday or game day, whatever it might be. Two o'clock in the morning, we're on there and everything. It's just been brilliant. Yeah, I, I mean, I know I'm not on there during the games because I'm tweeting from the Butch UK account, but I do always put a comment on during the games. And I, I do read it, read it through and it looks like uh, the laughs oh. that all our members are having, it's great. So please keep going on the forum during games. Uh, even though I'm not there, sorry to disappoint you, the others are always there. They're always there to chat with you. So please do make sure you get on to the forum. Remember, everyone, we are not only on YouTube. You can download the podcast from Spotify, Apple Podcast, Anchor, Breaker, Google Podcast, Pocket Cast, and Overcast. 2020 is coming to a close, but the Buccaneers season is not. We will be back next week where we will be reviewing the Atlanta game and previewing our uh, the Buccaneers wildcard game against whoever the opponent turns out to be. And of course, we'll find that out this weekend. Remember, the game against Atlanta on Sunday, it is a 6 p.m. kickoff in the UK. So all that's left for me, Stu, is to thank David, Adam and Pete for joining me. Thanks a lot. It, this guy, boys. And thank you all you for tuning in. <laughs> Enjoy the Atlanta game, and we'll see you soon. Take care. Ta-da. See ya.